Idaho has been long noted for its picturesque valleys nestled between high mountain ranges. My hometown, Cary, is one of these small, unincorporated valley communities situated in southeastern Idaho. The business section comprises only a few unmarked blocks along alternate Highway 93 and consists of four service stations, three cafes, post office, two grocery stores, dry goods store, a Firestone dealer, and the community welder. Also located in Cary is a craft cheese plant where raw milk is delivered each day from various ranches to be processed into cheese. This plant and the Firestone store employ the greatest number of employees. A community church and an LDS church are the only two churches in the community. The church and the school are the centers of cultural training for the young people. There are several lovely homes surrounding the small business section. Most residents of Cary are meticulous gardeners, and despite the short growing season, many beautiful flower and vegetable gardens can be seen. Ranching plays a vital part in the valley. With the exception of two or three potato fields, hay and grain are the only crops grown. These crops are raised as feed for the livestock. Contrary to Western TV serials, the cattlemen and sheepmen live peacefully together. In fact, most sheepmen have a small dairy herd in addition to a large number of sheep, and the cattlemen generally have a small flock of sheep. These sheep and cattle are pastured in the spring on surrounding desert areas, and during the summer months are herded to the high mountain ranges, only a short distance from the ranches. These mountain ranges are beautiful in the summer. Many varieties of wildflowers dot the grassy mountain slopes. Several wooded groves provide the ideal campsites for sheep camps. Water for irrigation in this area is provided from Fish Creek and Littlewood River. Not only do these bodies of water supply water for crops, but they provide recreational opportunities such as fishing and boating. A major project within the past two years has to be enlarge the Wood River Dam in the near future, a beautiful picnic area will be completed near this dam. Cary is indeed a friendly little town. It doesn't take long to become acquainted with mo almost everyone in the community. A great number of families are related, which probably accounts for the feeling of closeness you have with your neighbors and friends. A slogan on the front page of our county newspaper expresses my feelings about my hometown. It is a pleasure and privilege to live in the Wood River Valleys of Idaho. Muriel Sparks, 1961. Cary scenery hasn't changed much over the years, but the town itself has. That Littlewood River Reservoir picnic area has been completed and has been enjoyed by many people. The town is now incorporated and many people have come and gone and left their marks on this community. Same with many businesses. Here are some of the changes the buildings and the town has had over the years. And this was this was the high school that was built. Um, it was built in in 1920. And uh, the very first graduating class from Cary uh, was in 1924. And I believe there was about uh, seven or eight people that were graduated that year. Um, in 1928, this high school caught fire and uh, it, it burned, but a lot of the school was made out of, out of uh, uh, cement. And, and bricks and and so they they went back and and uh, <clears throat> just used the original uh, foundation and and the uh, the structure of the school and and then re and rebuilt the inside of it and, and the walls uh, of it and uh, then <clears throat> the school that I graduated from was was the older picture of this in Beth Adamson's book and uh, the high school was actually up here on the on the on the front, and this this part down here, uh, on the right side, uh, was was uh, kind of in the basement, and it was the sixth grade, and the seventh grade was over here, and the library was in this part, and then the business uh, the business and the typing room were up in this part here, and then uh, the office was on the other other side of it there. 
And uh, when I was when I was in grade school, um, they used to they used to um, end the recesses by ringing this bell up here. And this bell is is the same bell that's in front of the uh, the uh, grade school or the the high school as you're pulling down the road. That they have this bell there, there, but this actually it had a rope on it, and it went down into the the principal's office, and then he would just pull on the bell, and that would end the recesses uh, when the kids the kids came in. And uh, Kerry has produced uh, graduating classes uh, ever since 1924 uh, up and up until the present time. So that would that would make about 93 classes uh, that that's graduated out of out of Kerry. And during that that period of time, there's uh, uh, been a lot of athletic. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of athlete. Uh, athletics uh, that have happened and a uh, uh, lot of a lot of music that's come out of the school as well as uh, educating kids that have been able to go on to, to school and and uh, in, in many different areas so uh, this picture right here uh, of, of the cooks uh, <clears throat> The cook and the uh, the lunchroom was down in the basement of the of the school, but back back north of it, and these these ladies oftentimes got together with other ladies in the community, and and they would they would uh, can fruit and vegetables and 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 most of the meals that we had when I was in in uh, in high school, which was during the uh, the early sixties, uh, was all homemade food. There was uh, usually pota usually potatoes and gravy and and uh, soup and uh, sandwiches and and that sort of thing. And the food was good. It was really it was uh, a lot pretty delicious to eat. This picture of the post office uh, uh, is the one that I remember when I when I was pretty young, and you can see that. It's uh, it has post office carry post office there, and when you went in the door, all of the boxes were along this side, and then in front, uh, uh, two, and then this this building was made out of stones, and or bricks, and and the upper part of it was a uh, uh, just a place where where uh, they could hold community meetings and and. Uh, the ones that I remember, ones that I know of, is that uh, a lot of the Lady Law Park Cattle Association meetings were held up in uh, up in this uh, part of the building, and this was this was the door the door that went up there, and the stairs went up, and and this was pretty open uh, building, and then uh, later on, uh, this building was was tore down, and uh, not. Um, I think this building was just to the right of this, because this 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 was originally a, a John Deere building, and this was before my time. I don't I don't remember that building, but or I don't remember when it was a John Deere building, but uh, then this was was made into a, a the post office after after the old one was torn down, and uh, the post. Uh, and it was set up the same way. You went in the door, and and you went in the door, and and uh, the the boxes were all along the wall this way, and then then over this, over towards this way, um, and then uh, later on uh, they moved the post office again into the present post office, and uh, that was built I think about five or six years ago. <music> Building here uh, was was a uh, was a hospital building, and uh, and I don't know, let's see. It says it was first opened in 1926, and uh, E. W. Fox was was the doctor there, and of course that was long before my time. But uh, 
I remember a doctor by the name of Openshaw who uh, lived in this building and, and, and operated it as, a, as, a, as the hospital too. And uh, there were people that, that uh, were born. My brother Rick was born in this hospital. And, uh, uh, and, I, and there were others, others too. But, uh, um, and this hospital looks pretty much like it does today. Uh, you went in the front door and the doctor's offices were on the side. And then upstairs was the, was the patient's room. And then the places where uh, mothers had their children or had had their babies, and and uh, so it was it was uh, it was a good thing to have because uh, it was you know in those days it was long ways to, to to Haley, and that was the next closest hospital. Eventually, Doctor Fox went moved to Haley. And uh, uh, he operated his his business up there, and um, and after Doctor Openshaw, uh, who was here, I would say in the in the late fifties or early sixties, uh, when he moved away, then this this no longer was was uh, used as a hospital, and and uh, actually I think the church bought this building because uh, I remember. Uh, going across the across the road from from Harshbarter's place, which was the church when I was a kid, and we'd have Sunday school classes in this building, and uh, and then uh, I think the state presidency's uh, uh, offices was in this building uh, to begin with when Ezra Taft Benson was a or not or uh, Valdo Benson was the uh, vice was the uh, uh, state president. And then uh, shortly after that, I think they is when they they sold that and and uh, it became a private uh, uh, private building then. But uh, Kerry did have at one time a hospital uh, operating hospital in it. This is the Kerry Merck uh, Company that was owned by Adamsons. And the building is still still in carry now. Now I think it's a wood shop that's there. But uh, again, when I, when I was a kid, this was a store store uh, uh, part of the building where all the groceries were that, that that came in on the trucks. And then this part of the building was the grocery store. And uh, uh, in the back of the building, there was a uh, there was a meat shop that uh, Bud Cameron. Uh, was the the butcher back there and he took care of the meat and then this part of the building the left part of the building was uh, um, they they sold clothes and they sold shoes and, and dresses and 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 that's that sort of thing and uh, uh, this was always a favorite favorite place to, to go when when uh, when my mom went in, went into the grocery shop because this this part right here had all the the uh, the comic uh, magazines, and so we would just sit there and what and look at the comic magazines, and while she was doing the shopping. The other unique thing about this that I that I remember is this this building had a basement in it, probably still does, but. Uh, uh, in the in the fifties and sixties, uh, when the water would get high, the water would come up in that basement, and uh, but they had a lot of their uh, harness kinds of things down there, and and uh, horseshoes and, and that sort of stuff, and Bud Cameron had a uh, had a canoe that he would just put down in the basement, and if you wanted some of that stuff, you went down and got in the canoe with him, and then he rode around until he got to wherever it was stored and he picked it up and then you come back upstairs. Um, <coughs> and then later on, um, the grocery store, of course, was moved over to, to the other Adams's store, which just sold, sold uh, I think, Tuesday, last Tuesday, they sold it, finally. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of people shopped here. 
In the same time this grocery store was going on, Don Patterson had a grocery store that was just down the, down the street to the north. And uh, uh, this was an, an AG market and his was an IGA market, I think, if I remember right. And, and his was called Don's Frozen Food Market. So I actually had two, two uh, grocery stores in town uh, during that time which is pretty much different than today when we don't have any at all. And, uh, you know, people didn't, didn't uh, travel to Twin too much in those days, and so those grocery stores were, were pretty important for, for the community. It is the Blaine County Co-op, and uh, it's set about where the... Uh, the Kerry Mercantile Company set, uh, the, the Adamson Motor Company. And uh, um, this was long before my time. I don't, I don't remember this building. Uh, <clears throat> but but uh, it was originally uh, run by, by the uh, uh, early Adamson family that came into Kerry. And uh, it, it had the, the post office was, was with it and, and uh, so that's where people got their mail, and, and the mail would come into Peekaboo on the train, and then someone would go up, go to Peekaboo and pick up the mail and bring it back and and distribute the mail out of the post office uh, here in in uh, in town. Uh, and then Patterson's uh, Market. Uh, the picture that, that you have, that you got from Corrine, of course, shows that, that uh, there was no highway there. It's all dirt around this building. And it was built by uh, 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 Tom Patterson. And Tom Patterson was Don's, uh, Patterson's dad. And it looks to me like that's Don Patterson right there. But uh, this, this was... You know, when you read the thing there, it, it sounds like it was uh, pretty much a grocery store. But the, what I, I remember that he sold a lot of uh, uh, furniture uh, kinds of stuff, some chairs and, and tables and, and uh, I think even some, some uh, uh, sofas in, in that room. Um, but this didn't, uh, this, that, I don't remember this lasting very long. And then, of course, it was closed up like this picture shows. And you can see that the painting is almost all gone here and on this, <clears throat> on this particular picture. And when I was in high school, this, this wasn't operating anymore. Um, on this, this other picture that you've got, uh, the sports shop, this other one with the, with, uh, the Patterson Market, uh, to the left of it is the, is the sports shop, and then there was a cafe right here. And uh, when I was in school in the 60s, uh, Vera Davis used to run this cafe. And a lot of the, a lot of the girls uh, worked in that cafe during the summertime as, as waitresses, and that's how they made their money. And, and then, uh, usually, when we played football, we got through with our football uh, season, uh, particularly if we'd had a good season, uh, Vera would always uh, provide us some food in that. In that. And it's a good place to eat during that period of time, too. Um, and then the Davises eventually uh, moved from, from, uh, from Cary. Sorry. First LDS Chapel that we that we had in Cary was actually the place that uh, uh, Mrs. Justison lives right now, down by by the Blue Lamb. Um, that that house uh, was was uh, it's a log house. It doesn't look log, but it is, and and that's where the very first chapel was. And then in 1915. Uh, 
they they built the, uh, a new chapel in the center of town, and uh, that's what this this picture is here. And um, this is this is uh, the front of where uh, Larry and Bernita Harshbarger uh, live. But uh, uh, this is and this is the part that's facing the street. And when you went into this chapel, there was doors right in the front of it, as you can see. And there was there was a, a cement and and a metal fence around around it. And when you went into the chapel, um, the the floor was actually slanted from the east down uh, to the west. So that the upper, the uh, the higher part was in the front of the front of the chapel, and later on, uh, when they added on to this, they went in and changed that floor so it slanted the other way. And is and today, if if uh, you went in there, uh, Larry Larry showed you, you'd notice that the the floor was slanted uh, to the towards the east, um, and and that was so that the the chairs could be raised up, and and uh, then later on, uh, they also put a in in the fifties, I think, uh, pretty early fifties, and and maybe the late forties, they put a cinema screen, the cinema scope screen in this chapel, and they showed movies uh, in that on Saturday night, and uh, after they put the screen, that was one of the that was one of the best screens in in uh, Southern Idaho for showing movie pictures and and so uh, they they used it you know for for meetings on Sunday but on on Saturday nights they oftentimes showed films there and then later on in the 40s they added on to this chap this chapel and they added on to, uh, to the south of it uh, they put in a, 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 a gymnasium and then a lot of classrooms down there and then they built uh, the Relief Society room, and 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 that's where uh, I think that's where Larry and and Bernita's uh, uh, living room is now, and uh, uh, the chap the the, uh, uh, the gymnasium they put in there had a stage on it on one on the one end of it, and uh, for years and years a lot of conferences were held in that in that building, and. Uh, some pretty uh, uh, outstanding uh, people that are now history in in the church came and spoke at those those conferences. Uh, uh, Richard uh, Richard L. Evans was there. I remember being there, and of course uh, Ezra Taft Benson was there. Uh, his brother lived in Cary and was the uh, was the stake president in Cary for a while, so he often come to visit. And uh, there were there were others uh, too, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the bottom picture here shows the inside of the chapel, and uh, you can see there's a basketball uh, rim down here, and there was on the other side too, and uh, he used to have uh, basketball uh, tournaments, school or church tournaments in there, and we used to play volleyball in there, and then. Uh, uh, Every year there was a there was a harvest dinner, and uh, that's what this picture is uh, of. And uh, of course, there was only one ward in that time, and and every you know everybody came uh, to, to the dinner because it was that was a pretty big affair. And then the the stage was on the on the right side here, uh, and and uh, oftentimes they would put. Uh, uh, will put plays on on that stage and and uh, a lot of times uh, there were dances that were held in this in this recreation hall uh, there used to be a, something called the golden green ball that was held every every year and they would decorate this whole thing with with uh, uh, paper and uh, make it pretty fancy it was a it was a pretty big deal and and then uh, uh, there were live orchestras that played at those dances. And then uh, in the early 70s, uh, they, uh, this building needed to have a lot of repairs and stuff done on it. And so they finally decided that, that it would probably be better to just build a new chapel than uh, uh, 
than trying to repair this this old one. Uh, and so that's what they did, and, and I, I believe that uh, Bird Murdoch uh, was the bishop during the time that they built the chapel in the, that, we, that we meet in today. Uh, but, but Cary has always, uh, uh, the people in Cary have always been pretty active LDS people, and, and uh, some of the very first uh, settlers in Cary were, were uh, uh, LDS people. And so uh, the community has been influenced by that quite a bit uh, throughout the years. The Paris Motel, and, and as, as far as I can remember, it was always called the Paris Motel. But uh, it was just alongside the sports shop, and it's, it's still in, in existence uh, today. But... Uh, uh, doesn't they don't operate it anymore? But uh, uh, when I was in high school, this was a pretty uh, this was a pretty uh, going concern, and and usually they uh, they had you know there were people that stayed there almost every night, and uh, uh, when this picture was taken, there was probably there was there was no TV around, so that this was just a room that you stayed in. And later on, when televisions came into to being, then they, they put up a television antenna, and, and uh, uh, so people had something to do at night uh, when they watched. And then right across the street from that, there was the Cary Motel, and uh, it was just south of where, where uh, uh, that John Deere building was, and... Uh, <clears throat> This was a motel going down this way, and then they built a little little house right behind it. And uh, Tom Patterson actually built this, and this was a uh, soda place. You could go in there and get ice cream, and and uh, uh, he he had a soda fountain in there. And then later on, uh, when they they put this part this as part of this motel too. And when I was when I was in high school, we had uh, one of our teachers uh, uh, that came to carry to teach actually stayed in one of these rooms, in in the motel, and then of course later on this was this was all uh, taken down, and, and uh, of course doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> And uh, this this existed across the road from where Harshbargers live today. And uh, uh, when I was in when I was in high school, this was called Baird's Cafe, and they had a cafe here. And and uh, this thing also had a basement in it. Most quite a few of the ten, the buildings in town had basements during that time. But this also was a was a small motel behind it. And there was about maybe four or five uh, uh, apartments back there that people uh, stayed in. Uh, in this picture, you can see that you know this is after the. This is probably in in the mid fifties or sixties, and the televisions are are there. And televisions came into town about about nineteen fifty two. Um, and this this also was kind of a bar. Uh, they had a they had a bar in this place, in this place. This building here, when I was when I was in school, was called the Kerry uh, Kerry Motor, and it was run by Everett Twombly. Um, I'm not sure if he built that or uh, built it or not, but it was also a service station. And he had his gas pumps out out of here, and and Everett was a mechanic, and and uh, so you could go in in this door right here, and it went it went down uh, about four feet in, into this building, and and uh, he would he would uh, fix cars, and and he was uh, he was very good at that. His wife Gertrude was the uh, was the county nurse. 
And uh, when I was in school, there was just one county nurse, and she took care of uh, the kids in, in all the schools. Uh, she went around and, and, and took care of them. Um, and now this building is, is owned by uh, Greg, uh, Craig Patterson, and, and this is where he runs his, his uh, uh, business, uh, uh, part of his business out of. And uh, uh, later on, they, they made an apartment up in the top of this building, and, and uh, people, uh, different people have stayed there. The missionaries stayed there for a while uh, that was in Cary. Um, so there were quite a few gas stations in Cary, and uh, this was another gas station. This was a Chevron station. And this building is, is now the, uh, the city council uh, building. And, uh, uh, but it, it also had pumps out in front. And, and uh, uh, when I was going to school, uh, the Stewarts run that building. Uh, Morris Stewart's uh, brother was, was running that building. And then later on, uh, uh, a guy, uh, another guy bought it and he turned it into a rock and gift shop. And he had different things in there. And that business never did go very well. And then, uh, so he sold, he sold it out and, and then the town, uh, created the, the city council, uh, building out of that and, and the senior center is out of that building. The craft food and, and, uh, it was pretty much an up and coming business when I was when I was in school because most most people uh, in Cary had milk cows, and and sometimes they'd only have uh, ten or twelve milk cows, but but uh, uh, that that milk was all sent to the the craft uh, uh, factory and the, and they made they made that into cheese, and. Uh, um, <clears throat> The man that was the manager of that was uh, Charlie Haskell uh, when I was when I was growing up, and uh, a lot of times you could go, you could go in there while they were making cheese and they could give you uh, cheese particles uh, uh, and and they were they were always really good to eat. Uh, uh, we went in I went in there quite often because uh, one of my best friends was Charlie's boy and his name was Blaine and. And uh, so we went there qu quite a bit. And then uh, uh, in, in those days, uh, all the milk, when you milk cows at, uh, at your place, you put them in 10 gallon cans. And then uh, uh, they sent a truck around and, and Gail Park was the, uh, was the truck driver. And he'd come around and pick up all the mail, uh, all the milk, and then he would drive that in into this part and then they would empty the the cans of milk into the um uh, into the big vats that they had and uh, he would come around every day and pick up the milk and and uh, take them in and of course he had to do that because there's no way of keeping that milk cold you know so he had to pick it up every day uh and then later on of course uh they did away with the 10 gallon cans and they started using these uh these trucks to take the milk in um but this this factory closed down um i think about must have been in the middle 70s uh when it finally finally shut down <laughs> This picture, I think, is after, uh, I think, uh, uh, Rhonda Hunt took this, this over. This used to be the Judy, uh, Judy shop. And when I was in grade school, I can remember Mr. Judy uh, used to, to run this. And it was a, a, a gas station. And then uh, uh, I, I don't remember that he that he did any uh, mechanics uh, work there, but when Rhonda uh, bought it from him, uh, this was also a, a small store in here, 
and uh, Rhonda also worked on on cars and stuff back back in here in this uh, this place and uh, when I was you know after I got back to my mission I, I worked for Rhonda in, in this uh, store it was called Hunt's Hunt service at uh, at that time but it looked pretty much like it, it looks today and of course or looked when I was working for it and, and of course this is uh, M and J Motors now and uh, they took they took out the pumps and they took out the this this part of it and then this ring level this part down here. I went to South Carey School in the one room school in 1940 and that was the last class that was there. The next year we went to the Carey School and uh, we I was in the second grade and we had the second and third grade together in the basement of the southwest corner of the school. I remember the post office, this post office, because <clears throat> the school bus would stop and let us mail letters or put and get our mail on our way home from school. And Alice York was the postmistress. I remember the Carrie Merck because we hardly ever went to town except to go to school and if we really needed something the bus would stop and let us go in and get it. I remember I had to have some white socks stockings for to be in a program that I needed to dress up for and Our everyday stockings were long and brown and quite ugly. And so I stopped and went into the store that day to get some long white stockings. The program was in the church. And we had never been to ch church before. And I had never been before an audience before. And I stood up and couldn't remember a thing about my poem. Everyone milked a few cows, and at one time they separated the cream and the milk, and they took the cream to a cream station in the town. It was on the west side of the street, but I don't see a picture of it. But we also took milk to the cheese plant, and... Most people had some cows. They took some milk in there. And we had milk trucks that came around and picked up the cans. And uh, had flatbed truck they hauled it in on. When I was in high school, Chris Mina was over the nursing in the hospital. And some of us helped work in the hospital, and Chris taught us what to do. And after Ronald and I were married, we lived in this Cary Motel for a time until we bought a house. This is the old Bunning tractor business. It was later turned into the, to the post office. But uh, my dad worked in there as a mechanic in the back. The picture in the front is my Uncle Del Olson and his wife Gladys, and they're the ones that ran the Bunning Tractor, which was a John Deere business at that time. This is the picture of the old post office. Alice York was the one that was in that, that was the postmistress when I was here, when I was a young boy. And I've been in that post office many times to get the mail. This 
was a barber shop. And Vince Olson used to be in that barber shop, and I remember going to that and getting my hair cut several times, even when I was a teenager. This is a picture of the Cary Mercantile Company. Later, it became known as the Adamsons Incorporated. But in this picture, the grocery store was in the middle part. On the left-hand side was a dry goods store. My mother, Clarice Park, worked in there, along with Eve Adamson and Vera Adamson. Then on the right side, as you're looking at the building, that was where they had, uh, had all their groceries and things stored, or it was kind of a warehouse. But that was that way, I know, until at least uh, the middle 50s. Later, that building was changed, as you can see in this other picture, and it became known as Adamson's. They took out the grocery store, they took out the, the dry goods, and they made it into a garage. And at that time, it's when John Adamson ran that garage, and it was there oh, until the middle 60s, as I recall, or even later. This is a building of an old garage that was in Cary years ago. Les Green and Ed Green ran that when I was a young boy. This building is a picture of Kraft Foods. I lived in a house right to the west of this growing up. And I used to go into this building almost every few days and talk to the people in there, Charlie Haskell and Stuart Sparks. And uh, we had a good time there. In fact, they had a shower in this place, and I've even gone in there sometimes and showered when I was a young boy. And that's before all these tanks were on here. This is the old Cary Hospital. I know that it operated up until the mid-50s or later. And I know that uh, Diane's brother, Gary Murdoch, was one of the last ones that was born in that hospital. Two or three doctors that I can remember that lived here in Cary. One was a Dr. Settler, and another one after him was a Dr. Openshaw. Uh, and now it's uh, someone's residence. Shop, which is now the City Hall, was eventually up there on the, by the Pyra Corner. And it was originally called the Park Davis Business. And it was sold, and then they moved it down here, and it took them a long time to move that down here. Uh, then it was, before it was the, after it was the rock shop, I think that uh, Chet Kelly ran that thing as a garage. And now later it's been restored and put into the Cary City Hall, yeah, Cary City Hall. It was built in 1909. And the ones on front of that picture is Lula Park and Cora and Noel Park standing in the front. That's Lula Park and my dad and uh, Cora. You don't even know them, probably not. I don't know if you want to. They moved into this house in 1909. The picture here was taken between 1909 and 1910. This is a picture of the Cary Motel. It's right across the road from Adamson's, where I worked for 41 years. And many years ago, a lot of people stayed in this place. As you can tell, Cary has changed a lot. Even though the buildings and businesses may have faded or have disappeared, I still believe it is a pleasure and a privilege to live in Cary, Idaho.